persons uh, my colleagues dear friends uh, with such stalwarts on the dais you know it's feel difficult to talk <laughs> but i'll try to do justice as far as possible uh, the topic given is very vast and uh, the time may not be sufficient but i will try to put it concise so as uh, you know nephrologist uh, you get called usually at the fag end of you know all the reference and after the, all the other specialties have been covered that's when the nephro nephrologist gets called but mind you, the kidney is the king maker in the body. So if the kidney is good, the rest of the organs are in total. So statistically, uh, the most common cause of uh, end-stage renal disease is diabetes, whether globally or in any scenario. Uh, today's topic being a diabetic kidney disease, uh, the, usually the presentation is uh, 10 to 15 years post diagnosis of uh, diabetes and this is true with type 1 but in type 2 diabetic patients since the, the, the diagnosis is vast it can present at any time. Uh, 20 to 50 percent of the patients with uh, diabetes have uh, diabetic nephropathy down the line uh, with 28 prevalence, 28 percent prevalence in India and in these patients the over nephropathy over nephropathy is around 2.2 percent and among them 40 to 50 percent patients land up in dialysis dependent renal failure. So Kimmelstein and Wilson were the first persons in 1936 who, uh, who identified that microalbuminuria is the cause for progression of renal disease. So coming to the risk factors involved with which type of patients, subset of patients develop uh, diabetic kidney disease, they are both modifiable and non-modifiable factors. Uh, as the previous speakers have wonderfully told, uh, all the uh, modifiable factors are well known. Uh, coming to the non modifiable factors, family history of, uh, you know, previous, uh, uh, you know, having a renal disease with uh, patients have ethnicity of uh, African Americans, Prima Indians and with genetics, especially with uh, HLA, B27, B47 and uh, those with uh, history of having a gestational diabetes, all these are at, have a, having a risk of diabetic kidney disease uh, progression. So what actually causes uh, the entire uh, thing comes down to inflammatory milieu. So all these factors, uh, the genetic predisposition, the hyperglycemic state, all cause increase in the inflammatory cytos cytokine activation pathways uh, like the uh, connective tissue growth factors, vascular and telial growth factors, protein kinase C, angiotensin 2, nuclear factor, kappa B pathways. And these cause uh, what you call as uh, you know endothelial damage. With uh, you know, uh, uh, with matrix accumulation, podocyte loss, basement membrane thickening, eventually leading to fibrosis and end stage renal failure. So this is the Mogensen uh, classification of progression of uh, diabetic kidney disease over the years. So initially, uh, there is a hyperfiltration state, and uh, this is uh, this is when the try to the kidney tries to compensate for the loss of uh, you know. Uh, for, for the loss of glomerular functionality. Uh, usually during this stage, the histology is not seen. Uh, it is only on an electron microscope where there might be a glomerular, uh, glomerular basement membrane thickening. Uh, the silent stage is where, in the, you know, it is called as a silent stage for, practically because it is not picked up in our The microalbumina is not picked up in our routine urine test. Uh, the incipient stage and then leading on to uh, over nephropathy stage which you know which is where actually the patients try usually present. This holds true for type 1 diabetes like I previously said but in type 2 uh, type 1 diabetes but in type 2 patients this uh, you know, presentation can be in any of these stages. Uh, this is the histological picture uh, classification and histological picture. So uh, the first in in in, in uh, this is the uh, in the a, a a slide it is a normal uh, glomerulus in b we can see the mesangial hypocellularity and in the d slide this is where the Kimmel Wilson lesion is which is the no nodular glomerular sclerosis which is an accumulation of a matrix and uh, with uh, fibrosis seen in slide f. And again, an and electron microscope slide which shows uh, photocyte effacement with uh, hypocellularity. So, based on now, now once we have known the histology, so what is the target areas? 
So there are four target areas when it comes to the management of uh, diabetic kidney disease. One is the cardiovascular risk reduction, glycemic control, control of blood pressure and inhibition of the RAS system. Cardiovascular risk reduction is nothing but you know uh, having a proper lifestyle uh, and you know uh, taking care of our uh, diabetic control and all those things which lead up to it like uh, the previous speaker have said you know obesity and you know unhealthy lifestyle. Why cardiovascular risk reduction? Because both the organs are uh, victims of the microvascular end damage and uh, this causes this microvascular damage causes uh, thickening of endothelium and collagen overproduction of the endothelial growth factors and vascular inflammation uh, leading to the generation of uh, reactive oxygen seeds with respect to kidney disease uh, low protein diet is what is recommended other uh, uh, advisors such as cessation of uh, you know smoking and all that holds true for all the conditions but when it comes to kidney disease low protein diet uh, which uh, is around 0 0.8 to 1 gram per kg per day and uh, and also uh, you know reduction in the phosphorus intake various randomized control trials have shown that uh, there has been a 48 percent reduction uh, when uh, this uh, reduction in the uh, dietary protein as well as uh, the phosphorus intake uh, is initiated early on coming to glycemic control uh, there is a significant reduction in proteinuria with those with patients with uh, good glycemic control. Two trials have, you know, have uh, established beyond doubt uh, this uh, benefit. One is the uh, DCC trial and the another is the EDIC trial. The diabetes complication and uh, control and complication trial, which was uh, which studied a group of uh, subset of patients of more than fourteen hundred in type one diabetes. Where two groups with having intensive uh, insulin therapy with uh, those with uh, you know two times uh, insulin dosing were studied, and uh, this was substantiated by the EDIC trial, and it was shown that the overall reduction not only in diabetic kidney disease but uh, with uh, non-fatal myocardial infarction, stroke, and death was around 57 percent. And the secondary outcomes were studied with respect to urine protein albumin ratio. Uh, it was uh, seen that there was a 40 to 50 percent reduction in the UPCR over the time period of this study. Another study which uh, which 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 was a follow-on of this uh, both these trials, but we were studying type two diabetes, was uh, the United Kingdom prospective diabetes study. In this type two diabetes patients were selected. Uh, one of them were given the conventional dietary restrictions. The other were put on uh, OHR therapy. And it was found that there was a reduction in the microvascular risk uh, over a period of 10 years. And this was even followed up uh, in, in the later years, which, showing, uh, which emphasized that there was a molecular memory, uh, sorry, metabolic memory, where early onset of, uh, you know, good control showed effect many years post uh, uh, initiation of that. Coming to the uh, second uh, important drug, which is now known as the panacea of uh, diabetic kidney disease, is the SGLD2 inhibitors. Uh, some, some are even calling them as the wonder drugs. Uh, they, they basically inhibit the sodium glucose tra co transport in the, in, in the primary commodity tubule. So they cause uh, naturesis, reduce the glu uh, glyco load, cause glycosidia, and have a moderate volume contraction. So, they are recommended to be started uh, as per KTGO in all the patients, uh, especially in, even in the initial st stage 1 of CKD as well and can be continued even post uh, GFR going down below 30. But usually it is not recommended to be started post GFR uh, being less than 30. Uh, combined with uh, RAS inhibitors, they are known to cause uh, you know increase in AKI incidence. But still their benefits outweigh the risk. They decrease and the other beneficial effects uh, through which the AGLT2 inhibitors are known to have beneficial effect is they, they reduce the level of citric acid and also inhibit the accumulation of glycolytic byproducts, uh, cause you know decrease even in the sympathetic uh, pathways and improve the vascular endothelial dysfunction in the uh, in, in diabetic rise by enzyming the nitrooxide diastolic the function. So this is a, this is the entire bonnet of how the SGLT2 inhibitors help. They have uh, both the vascular as well as the glomerular effect. Uh, 
there were many trials which have you know uh, confirmed the beneficial effect of SGLT2. Credence, Hepareg, Empareg, and uh, Daba CKD are those trials in which the uh, kidney outcome was a primary outcome, whereas the others had a kidney outcome as a secondary outcome, with primary being the cardiovascular. In the Credence trial, uh, a dose of 100 mg of uh, canagliflozin was uh, compared against placebo. Uh, with, with a subset of patients having GFR of 30 to 90. The primary outcome was a composite of end-stage kidney disease and doubling of creatinine. And it showed a beneficial effect with, uh, with the SGLT2. Likewise, the DAPA CKD also had uh, compared DAPA uh, against uh, uh, you know, a placebo. Uh, with Empareg emphasizing that uh, even with patients with uh, you know low dose uh, with uh, low microalbuminuria of 200, the effects were still outweighed uh, the uh, the entire placebo effect. Having to GLP-1 and DPP-4 inhibitors, again another set of uh, you know subset of uh, oral hypoglycemic drugs which have uh, beneficial effect. Uh, GP1, GP, GLP1. Now it is coming up in a big way, you know, in in, obes in treating obesity also. Uh, but with respect to the kidney, uh, they act by modulating the exchange of sodium and uh, hydrogen exchanger to reduce the natriuresis. Also, the DPP4, which uh, increases the absorption of uh, oligopeptides, can be reduced by using all these inhibitors. Protein kinase A activation and uh, nuclear factor kappa beta activity also is inhibited uh, by both this class of drugs. Uh, Natriuresis is the actual main effect of uh, GLP-1 with regards to kidney. Uh, they act also, they also promote the atrial natriuretic peptide, which causes you know uh, afferent arterial uh, vasodilation and overall helps in preventing the fibrosis. Various studies have been done uh, among them the uh, Sagliptin, uh, saxagliptin assessment of vascular outcomes in diabetes uh, in, in myocardial infarction trial, though the kidney was not the primary outcome, still they showed uh, significant reductions of albuminuria. In the, the TCO trial, also confirmed the, what the uh, previous trial had said. DP4 inhibitors, the satiety and clinical adiposity liraglutide evidence trial, where high dose and low dose of liraglutide had 18.36%, 10.79% compared to only placebo effect, which was only 2.3%. In the lira renal trial, liraglutide treatment failed to show a significant improvement in uh, urine albumin ratio, but at the same time, they showed improvement in uh, reduction uh, in, in, in preventing the rapid progression of the uh, estimated GFR rate. Blood pressure control, <coughs> this is both the cause as well as the uh, effect of uh, diabetic kidney disease. Uh, 36 to 84 percent of the patients who are having end stage renal disease present with this. Uh, it is usually when there is no uh, presentation of uh, hypertension along with uh, diabetic nephrology, uh, kidney diseases, but we have to look for other causes which can be caused. So, hypertension present with diabetic kidney disease is a foregone conclusion. KDGO, uh, which uh, in association with American uh, Society of uh, Diabetes has uh, come up with these guidelines. So, what they have told is the target uh, for achieving good BP control is systolic less than 140, 90. But in, in those with microalbuminuria, the target has been revised to 130 by 80. This has been confirmed by the accord uh, BP trial, uh, where uh, intensive BP control versus you know uh, uh, systolic BP control of 140 was studied. Uh, though there was no beneficial outcome uh, as such, but it, go it goes beyond to say in this trial that it was found out that good BP control definitely reduced the progression of diabetic kidney disease. In Steno uh, 2 uh, randomized control trial, which was a multi-centric, multi-model uh, trial involving a lot of uh, you know uh, permutations and combinations, the long-term effects of uh, good uh, uh, hypertension control was uh, was uh, was very evident. But specifically to diabetic kidney disease, it did not show any uh, variations. So this is the KDGO guidelines uh, for uh, BP control. Uh, standardized office BP measurements, uh, standardized is nothing but what we, which we usually tell the patient 
to be you know in a be in a quiet room and uh, no caffeine or exercise in the in the previous 30 minutes with an empty bladder and and relaxing for 5 minutes and that's how the bp is is, is measured and once uh, the bp measurements are done um, the first advice is usually the lifestyle uh, uh, changes uh, salt intake which is the paramount in uh, in the in this uh, hypertensive control is a salt intake restriction to less than 2 grams which is in all the previous studies where they had advised this it was not achievable uh, but still they keep advising that uh, physical activity of 150 minutes per week with moderate to uh, intense exercises. What drugs to be started? Uh, ideally, they are, uh, the KD goes uh, as advised ACE or ARB inhib uh, inhibitors as a first line therapy with additional uh, two drug therapy if needed with uh, calcium channel blockers. Coming to inhibition of the uh, renin angiotensin uh, system, uh, this is the universally mandated to put patients who are having diabetes with evidence of uh, diabetic kidney disease or with just evidence of hypertension on uh, renin angiotensin system inhibitors. It is a common because uh, diabetic kidney disease is a complex disease, it involves a lot of inflammatory and uh, glycosuric milieu, which causes uh, glomerular hypertrophy, progressive mesangial expansion, leading on to tubular interstitial fibrosis. The inhibition of RAS system is very paramount, whereas because all these factors are interlinked with the uh, RAS angiotensin system. So, we, uh, based on this study, uh, there are three sets of subset of patients which were uh, uh, which were classified. Those with normal albuminuria, studies like the RAS and the direct uh, uh, and the HOPE trial, they have said that in patients with with uh, normal albuminuria, still the RAS inhibitors had beneficial effect. But in these trials, the primary outcome was not the kidney. Whereas the Bergamo nephrologic, nephro, nephrologic diabetes complication trial, the Benedict trial, actually had the diabetic kidney disease as the, the real outcome as the primary composite, uh, where in patients with normal amenorrhea, the use of Trendropril plus Virampril alone uh, decreased, had a better outcome compared to using only the, uh, uh, only the CCP as the uh, arm. In those with microalbuminemia, IRMA trial, where the effect of irbisartan development of rapid nephropathy, where irbisartan with a dose of 150 or 300 was compared with a placebo, and it showed a long term effect up to almost for two years also, it showed an effect of, of reducing the microalbuminemia and decreasing the progression of EGFR. In those with over nephropathy, uh, still, it is uh, you know whether to start and you know worsen the AKI or you know uh, keep it as a, as a backup. Uh, it's still a matter of debate. The reduction of endpoints in uh, non-incident dependent diabetic, diabetes mellitus is angiotensin antagonists like losartan have confirmed significant renal benefits with those with type 2 diabetes along with retinopathy. IDNP trial where uh, ibisartan was. Uh, which was, was both combined with amlodipine, you as well as one of the arms was having only a placebo. Both showed that the RB certain outweighs the benefit of the uh, placebo as well as the amlodipine. With RAS inhibition, still patients can present with uh, a lot of you know hypertensive uh, manifestations, and this can be explained by the aldosterone escape phenomenon, where the effects of aldosterone do exist even in spite of you know RAS inhibition which is basically a refractory hyperaldosterone. This has been again, you know, dealt with in the Fidelio and Figaro DKD trials. Uh, when everything fails, we nephrologists usually fall back to, you know, dialysis. Uh, renal replacement therapy in those with instant renal disease. Uh, hemodialysis, now everyone uh, has a very good idea of what hemodialysis contain. In patients who, who have uh, issues with vascular access and all that, peritoneal analysis is always a fallback. Uh, transplant, transplantation in patients who have uh, ESRD, uh, transplantation is, uh, is the best uh, treatment forward. Uh, the latest being the zero transplantation, which I will tell you. Recent advances, uh, so this is the entire cascade of uh, how the inflammatory uh, mediators work. And in each point, new newer molecules are being developed to you know, stop this inflammatory uh, uh, cascade uh, with uh, you know, direct phase inhibitors. 
connective uh, uh, tissue growth factor inhibitors and uh, endothelial receptor blockers as well. Phenylalanine, like as we previously discussed, uh, where you know the allosteric and esco phenomenon was uh, being discussed. So, phenylalanine is a non-steroidal selective mineral particle receptor antagonist, and uh, now it has been approved by FDA as well. So, both these trials had a had a subset of patients who who were put on this drug. Uh, Fidelio was the uh, was a trial in which the uh, renal outcomes were the primary. And Figaro was uh, dealt with the cardiovascular outcomes as the primary composite, as well as uh, whereas the secondary outcomes were the renal parameters. So, 5,000 odd patients with uh, CKD and type 2 diabetes, meaning uh, in one, one plus one ratio, one, one is to one ratio, uh, received both phenylalanine and placebo. Uh, there was almost 30 to 40 percent reduction in the overall uh, composite primary outcome. Uh, so, the conclusion was the treatment of phenylalanine resulted in lower risk of CKD progression and cardiovascular events than the placebo. Another promising uh, drug is the endothelial receptor antagonist, especially uh, uh, endothelial receptor antagonist type A, uh, where endothelin was found to be increased in kidney disease due to uh, the hyperglycemic load uh, and, uh, and the presence of insulin and other pro inflammatory uh, cytokines. This causes sustained vasoconstriction of the efferent arterial uh, leading to deleterious effects like uh, photocyte damage and eventually fibrosis and uh, GFR decline. So, the anti albuminary effects of uh, endothelial receptor after certain in a phase 2 trial, which was the SONA trial, uh, this trial was terminated early on because of the, you know, the loss of patients and a lot of complications which were coming in. But till the time it was uh, done, it definitely showed that the, the, uh, the, there was definitely the, some component of benefit in starting these drugs. But because of uh, you know, early termination and low number of endpoints, uh, it was discarded. Hopefully, in the future, new uh, RCTs may you know, validate the findings. Nuclear factor kappa B inhibitors, uh, they regulate the cytokine endo, uh, encoding genes, uh, which cause you know, neutrophil and macrophage, uh, you know, <coughs> uh, neutrophil and macrophage acclimatization and as well as effects. Uh, Overexpression also triggers calcification of endothelial cells leading to endothelial dysfunction. Hence, inhibiting this uh, goes a long way in uh, reversing the effect. Uh, our routine turmeric has uh, this non-medicated compound of this uh, drug, which is known as the curcuma longa. So, uh, you know, you must have seen, you know, patients who are having uh, in, in, uh, inflammation, usually have tried to apply turmeric. It's because of this compound, which is having the same effect as, uh, you know, the drugs, uh, drug-based uh, nuclear factor inhibitors such as uh, botulism and enosumab. Pentoxophilin, uh, another uh, another upcoming drug which is uh, which is in uh, peridian trial. Still, it is an ongoing trial. Uh, it, uh, it has caused, uh, it has shown till now whatever uh, the primary outcomes have come. It has shown a significant decrease in GFR with the greater reduction in the microalbuminuria. Few other drugs which were still in the make and uh, but have not reached the uh, you know penultimate trials uh, this many. Coming to uh, the uh, uh, genotransplantation, uh, you must have studied uh, seen in the news very recently. This has been done where uh, you know uh, the pig's uh, kidney was transplanted to the human body. It was done at the Massachusetts General Hospital. Uh, it was led by Leonardo, Dr. Leonardo Rile. So they have uh, they have sliced 69 genomic edits with uh, CASRE uh, uh, RNA probes, and they have transplanted that into the kidney. Uh, the update is that the patient didn't survive, but what they are saying is post three four months, the cause of that has, is not because of renal failure, was due to some cardiovascular causes. So till we get a good uh, you know idea about what the future holds. I think uh, we still need to depend uh, on our uh, age-old, uh, you know, live-related transplants and cadaver-related transplants. Our provincer is part of that uh, organization, and he's actively, you know, promoting, uh, you know, organ donation. So, hats off to you, sir. So, uh, with this, uh, I would like to end my talk. I have a small video to show what the future holds for.
People living with kidney failure can soon look forward to a future without dialysis or an endless wait for a transplant organ. Combining continuous treatment with total mobility, the implantable bioartificial kidney will give patients back their health, freedom, and quality of life. The compact device will replicate many functions of healthy kidneys and will not require immunosuppression drugs. The bioartificial kidney combines a mechanical hemofilter to remove toxins from blood and a bioreactor containing engineered renal tubule cells to maintain water volume, electrolyte balance, and metabolic functions. Highly efficient membranes constructed from semiconductor silicon wafers enable filtration without requiring pumps or electrical power while protecting the renal cells from rejection by the patient's immune system. The biocompatible device attaches to the circulatory system and removes toxins to the bladder as waste. Um, today, I mean, like what you said, it's, it can go on for a day actually, it's a huge problem. Mm. But uh, in your uh, presentation, a couple of things that you said, uh, very common thing is reduction in protein in the diet, for example. So, when do you suggest that it should start as soon as protein urea starts, or as soon as diabetes is diagnosed in a patient, in a person, or uh, after you know the protein urea or the initial signs go on? That's the first question. So, we you as well as our comfortable members in the test. Uh, and the second one is uh, the NGL2 inhibitors. Um, do you think? Uh, in a time has been given to say, okay, these drugs are safe because a lot of patients come to me with the UDX. And then the balance is very difficult to say. So I have the call and then just let them stop it. And then see if I try to figure out well with that. So these are two things I want to be because there are a lot of questions which come up yes. with a very good presentation with a lot of studies quoted. So these two things I would like. I think the, the, to your first question, sir, uh, the ideally it is on stage three, uh, and below that we advise a very strict uh, you know protein restriction, uh, and uh, especially in patients with having a lot of uh, you know uh, rapidly progressive uh, renal disease, definitely that is the uh, the advice. I mean, to your second question, yes, we have seen patients with uh, UTIs and, in fact, foreigners gangrene also, and patients who are using SGLT2. I think it's more about balancing the risk and benefits. If patients are coming back with recurrent UTI, I think that is a culprit and you have to identify it. So one message, what we want to do from the nephrology side is that uh, diabetes is uh, among three patients of diabetes, one patient is suffering from the one So whenever you see the diabetic patient, it's better to screen for the diabetic kidney disorders. So at least ask them, at, at least take the creatinine and urine, a complete urine examination once a year. If there is normal also, just go annual screening. And uh, regarding the SGLT inhibitors, so it's better to continue with a reducer dose of the SGLT inhibitors because it helps uh, to reduce the protein. And there are four pillars for uh, diabetic inhibitors. One is the ARPs or AC inhibitors, SGLT inhibitors, and then diet. Diet is very important as the from said this well, then the, the stage three. But once you are diabetic, it's better to control because let me tell you how that is a metabolic uh, patient within the metabolic syndrome. So definitely it will help. And uh, regarding the coming to the other drug, that is like pyridinone, it's also good there, but only the problem is with the hyperkalemia that we can manage uh, because our patient will drop it in 5.5. Thank you. So, congratulations to us for a wonderful talk. He started from Catus Basic as well as your medical pathology, then non clinical medicine, then some of those, including that is an advanced seeking by our medical team. So, as we have said, actually the four pillars of therapy are actually the first is the loss of the SMC, the second is the SGLP, the third is the Indian one, and the fourth is the equivalent of the This is the recent published slow violence in the GLP1 the GLP1 recent journals are considered as four pillars. So, these four pillars we have to uh, start in every patient uh, as much as possible uh, as they are tolerated. But few patients, uh, elderly patients, because of crochet, uh, because of bad issues, they will get mainly good years. And actually, frequently gender infections are more common in the case. So we need to uh, add them uh, as well as well.
ियस <laughs>
as a non-diabetic individual. So most of the patients do not have been seen daily. Yes. And, uh, some have been screened to be having non-diabetic kidney disease and go to where the the standard treatment and they tend to have low protein in India and so this was seen daily. Yes, very true. Thank you.